asked to explain how do the isolation switches work. Now you can see in the manual here, you'll get a straight through connection all the way through. One to two, three to four, five to six, seven to eight. And they're pretty much gonna be all the same. But then you get confused, don't you, with these type of uh, two poles in parallel. Now, when your current goes up, and it's in the technical parameters down here. So as your voltage goes up, if you're just braking on one, then the current break is a lot less. So what they've done is they break across two. So you might have a wire loop here or a bus bar that goes across the two points. Ooh, I'm pointing at the screen, not here. Uh, across any of these two points. So you would have a bus bar going across there, meaning that one and three would be the disconnect, but it disconnects as a double poled switch. You see it there, look as well. So they're isolated from each other. And here's another example here, where the line comes in here, double switched, but it continues over here and is double switched on that side. Now there's loads of different ways to configure these. So what you basically wanna do is have them so that you've got a double pole switch. So here's our 50 amp one that we use. Um, there we go, and it's in focus. So it'll always be on a higher current and higher voltage, a double pole isolation. It's not worth doing it on a single one because it may not actually disconnect and they will weld together. And this just doubles up the, um, the um, availability of it to actually break that uh, connection. So I hope that helps somebody. So here we go, that's probably a better one with the uh, bus bars going through. So you come in on two, goes through three, comes back down out of four. And then your other side there, exactly the same, comes out the bottom if you're wired in the bottom and some people prefer it that way or they'll have their solar coming in. But you could easily swap that uh, bridge there down the other side and have the other side coming in. Um, or do it the opposite way around. But it's always worth, if you look at my other video where we do the continuity check uh, between the uh, things, I know it gets really confusing when it's something like this. <laughs> Uh, what else? So yeah, so uh, I hope that helps uh, you work out how to do it. So do a continuity test and then you just bridge between the two. So there's usually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight are the actual connectors through and, and that's how you do it.